80,000 ISO? Surely not. Shut the front door. This has got to be a wind up. Well, it's not. I'm Sam, a wedding photographer from the UK, and welcome to my channel, where I hope to inspire and educate others in the sphere of wedding photography, and maybe beyond. Today, we're looking at how I took an image at 80,000 ISO. Firstly, why and how that happened, but also the lesson and experience behind it. If you like this setup and what we're doing here, hit subscribe and follow us for more content. Okay, let's get this episode moving. Right, before we get into the video about this ISO thing that we're going to talk about, I wanted to just quickly say a very big thank you to anybody that subscribed to this channel because over the weekend we hit get this 200 subscribers now i know what you're thinking just what's 200 i thought you were going to say 200,000. we've got a long way to go before we get to 200k but why on earth would i just say thank you for 200 subscribers well it's just a point like we all have to start from this zero no one starts their audience with 5k followers 10k followers doesn't matter what industry you're in, whether you're watching this as a YouTuber, a videographer, a photographer, everybody has to start from zero. And the key is to just keep showing up, to keep serving your audience, bringing value and content that's worthwhile for them. And that doesn't just apply to YouTube, that can apply to any industry that you are in, it doesn't matter where you are. And there will always be excuses. There will always be the opportunity to find an excuse not to do something, to not promote yourself, to not turn up, to not produce content, to not film a YouTube episode on a Monday morning when you don't feel very well, like you've got a cold and a bit of a headache, which, which I have, and yeah, I'm not after sympathy, but I have. It's also cold here in the UK. Is that an excuse? That's a, that's a bit lame. Um, that's not an excuse. But there's someone in the studio this afternoon. There's my kitchen's being done at the house. I know I've got to nip home at some point and go and sort the plaster out. I've got a wedding gallery to edit that I said would be done at the start of this week that I've still got a few hundred images to finish off for. Like there are always excuses, but I'm here. I'm showing up and I'm hopefully going to bring a bit of value and a bit of insight and a bit of experience to you for your journey, for your development as a photographer. Whatever it might be, wherever you are, I'm going to be here. I'm showing up and I'm not finding the excuse. So to everybody that has subscribed to this channel, thank you. I think, I think this morning we had about 211, 211 subscribers. So genuinely it means a lot to anybody that's liked, commented, shared, subscribed, thank you. If you don't subscribe and you like what we're doing, you know what to do, right? You don't need me to tell you. Um, I am gonna go make my third coffee of the morning. The plants need a water. The sun is rising over the studio. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of B-roll and I'll see you back at the desk in two ticks to talk about that image. Does anyone know how many coffees are too many before, say, 10 a.m.? Three's okay, right? I mean, I'd say that's kind of the minimum for anybody that's got two kids. The shakes haven't kicked in yet, though. Steady as a rock. I'm having to work hard at that, though. That's never a good sign, is it, the coffee shakes? Okay, you've not tuned in to hear about my coffee vice. You're here to find out why, what, and how on earth I would capture an image at 80,000 ISO. But I did. It's not a lie. That said, I do have a very small confession just to get out of the way first. It was a complete accident. I didn't mean to. I just got a bit control ring happy. And before you know it, 80,000 ISO kind of, kind of just slipped. Let me set the background for you first though. I was at Kew Gardens in London, just like the most ridiculous and beautiful wedding venue. If you've never been to Kew Gardens, Firstly, you absolutely should. Known as the largest botanical gardens in the world. Um, it's quite easy to get lost around there, but still you, you do need to give it a visit. Just make sure you grab a map. That was, that was punchy, punchy map. So 
it's the evening and let me just show you the kind of space we're working with here it's a huge conservatory the ceiling is so high and dark we can't bounce flash or certainly not easily we might as well be outside in the dark we've got dj lights coming in from all sides which can help and hinder at the same time this is a tough space to work no questions about it and before the Canon 5D Mark IV and the new R6s and the R5, this would have needed an off-camera flash setup. A couple of stands in a couple of corners, firing a flash gun across the subjects, which isn't really my vibe. But there wouldn't have been another option. That is until now, because we can shoot at higher ISOs. Combine that with a little bounce flash, a fast prime lens, a slowish shutter, and we can now get an exposure in a scene that's as challenging as you'll find. I suppose before we show you the image that's at the center of this video, I should just show you my work up until this point. So if we just explore a few frames here, you can see we're at 10,000 ISO. We're on the 35 EF Mark II lens, shooting at f1.8. And the shutter is varying from 1 over 80 to 1 over 125. But you can see from just this short sequence, the space is tough. I'm having to work hard here. Well, the camera is having to work hard. Light is at a premium, it's fighting hard, and these are the selects. I'm pretty sure that the cutting room floor will be covered with out of focus or badly exposed frames, because that's just what happens when you're in such a situation as this. And the next factor to consider here is that I'm using the control ring adapter for my EF lens. There's a video on that coming soon, but in short, it is brilliant. Mainly as you can map ISO adjustment to the control ring making it super quick to adjust on the fly, which is pretty much what happens here. In the shots leading up to the frame, you can see here, we've just finished the first dance. There was a very high powered light from the DJ booth and things just, they're happening quickly. You don't really get time to think about settings. So I cranked my shutter to one over 6,400. That light goes and now I'm at 10,000 ISO. As the frames roll on, we're at 16,000. Now, 25,600. Now we're at 32,000. And then, whoops, just like that, 65,535. Hold on a second. Uh, that's not 80,000. Right, that's the, that's the limit that Photo Mechanic will display an ISO up to. If we fire up Lightroom, there it is, 80,000 ISO. Now, the whole point of this video is not to say to you, hey, look, you can go and shoot at 80,000 ISO and it'll be totally fine. It's not and you probably shouldn't shoot at that ISO. But one of the questions I get asked so often whenever I post about my settings on Instagram is, why would you shoot that at 6,400 ISO? Or why is the ISO so high when it's at 8,000 ISO? And this is the lesson right here, isn't it? It's not 2006 anymore. The sensors in most new mirrorless cameras are capable of shooting at ISO levels we've never experienced before. This frame isn't perfect, but is it usable? Yeah, just about. A little grading, balancing of the darks and shadows, a touch of noise reduction, and we've got a frame that is more than usable. Would you print it to A3? Uh, probably not, but again, that's okay. I think the point I'm trying to make is this. If you're still of the belief that you should try and keep your ISO really low because that's what they used to do or teach you, then you need to shake it off. Cue Taylor Swift. Shooting at a higher ISO opens up a new way of shooting in scenes and situations we just couldn't before. Again, don't take this as, Sam said I could shoot at 32,000 ISO. You can't. Well, you can, but you can't. Yeah, do you know what I mean? You can't, you, you can, but you shouldn't. But you can shoot at 8,000 ISO. You can shoot at 12,800 ISO and the quality of image is still incredibly high. This image from the dance floor of Kew Gardens made the final cut. It's by no means perfect. The camera operator, this guy, got his setting knickers in a twist. But that happens at fast paced events such as weddings. Is the image still usable and okay? Yeah, of course it is. Should you actively go out and shoot at 80,000 ISO? No, no you shouldn't. But should you let go of the idea that you can't go above 1,600 ISO? Yeah, yeah you should. Right, I've got a kitchen fitter to go and sort out at home. Thanks for swinging by. Let me know in the comments below if this has changed how you think about ISO and how many coffees you have before 10am. See you soon guys. Ooh.